Hello, fans of software development. Hello, fans of artificial intelligence. Today, I'm going to talk about the latest and newest hot stuff, which is chat GBT from OpenAI. But I'm not giving you the classic presentation, which you see nowadays everywhere where someone is logging in at OpenAI and using their tools. No, I will show you how to build your own application and how to use the chat GBT API to integrate this super powerful artificial intelligence into your application over its API. So what you can see here in my browser is a super simple Spring Boot web application. It's done uh, with the programming language Java, with the Spring framework and with Timeleaf as HTML template engine. Yeah. But um, you can do this with also with other tools. Yeah. T today I'm just focusing on how to use the API and an API can be used also in other ways yeah, and with other languages and other frameworks. So let's use here this chat input, how to use chat GPT API in Java applications and ask this question. So I click the send button on my web application. This creates a post request to my web application and my web application is then sending an HTTP post request to the chat GBT API. And here we see the response of the chat GBT artificial intelligence. And it says chat GBT API is available for Java applications through the chat GBT Java SDK. I didn't use it. I just, I'm just using simple HTTP requests. So um, I didn't try this SDK. So, um, the SDK is a simple a way to, to communicate with chatbots and so on. To use the API in your Java application follows these steps. Install ChatGBT SDK using Maven. Maven settings. To be honest, I don't like this answer much. So let's try it one more time and see if we get this time a different explanation. Um, Yeah, so, so that was what I'm looking for. Um, it says that if we're making requests to the ChatGPT API, you will need to provide your ChatGPT API key to the ChatGPT client object in order to get a response or whatever. Yeah? So this response is cut because I didn't um, give it infinite resources uh, to consume um, for giving me here a very long answer. Yeah? So I make a cut after some um, computation power is, is used so far. But the main point is, yeah, so um, if you want to use the ChatGBT API, you have to go to openai.com. There you can click on API to see the details about the API. And there you have also um, documentation how to use the API. So we can click here on read documentation and here you get really a good explanation how to use the chat GBT API. Feel free to use it, but you can also continue uh, watching how I'm doing it um, so that you really see it. First of all, it was said we need an API key and if you created first your account at OpenAI, you have to log in and then you are able to create um, an API key. And you can do this by clicking here on your personal account and then it says view API keys and here I can generate a new API key and I have to use this API key within the request I'm sending to the ChatGPT API so that I'm allowed to use it. Yeah. So let's check again the documentation here, but let's switch now to my IDE because here I prepared my simple Spring Boot project as I told you before. Um, it's 
done with Java as programming language and Timeleaf as HTML template engine. If you are interested in those topics and in general about topics about the Spring framework, go to my blog agilecoding.blogspot.com. There you will find all detailed information about this kind of stuff. Today we will really focus just on using the API. So to make quick what we see here, we see here a um, controller of the Spring application which, manage, which manages the page which is currently displayed in the browser. So I have just one main page and the main page can send me a GET request. So I give just back the main page and if I get a POST request, then probably I have a message which the user typed in into the input field as I did before. I take this um, message over a, a wrapper DTO uh, class and then I pass it to a message called chat with GPT-3. And that is really the interesting thing about how to communicate with the API. So all this is done here in those two methods. And it's again pretty simple. We are first building here an HTTP request. So that is what we are going to then with our HTTP client. Um, the HTTP request is built with a builder. So we say HTTP request, new builder. Then I have to define the URI, which has to point to the API, of course. So this is the URL, HTTPS api.openai.com slash v1 slash completions. I have to define in a header that I'm going to send application JSON as content of my post request. I have to give another header which is the, which is the authorization header. So you need to have an account at OpenAI and an uh, API key. And this open AI API key is sent in your post request inside the authorization header as a Bira token. So it needs the prefix Bira and then a white space followed by the key. And finally, we have to define that as a post request and we have to put the content, what we want to send to the API, which is the chat message and some other stuff um, inside the post request. Yeah, and then we can build it. For creating this post request body, I created another small method called chat message as post body. Yeah, you see it here. It uses some kind of helper class, which I called completion request. Um, and the input is the message. The message is just the string which we typed in here in this field here yeah, that is taken as message. And how do I know how to build this completion request? Yeah, so if you check the API reference by provided by OpenAI, you see here on the right side several example requests. And yeah, here you can see an example for the post body, um, which defines a prompt, and the prompt is the message. Yeah, which we send. So here in this case, the chat message is say this is a test. And then um, we see here what is the response, what we get. But let's focus now first on the request. Yeah, so we set uh, a prompt, which is a chat message. We have to define a model which is used um, by the artificial intelligence to produce the answer. Yeah. And um, I used also the values max token and temperature, which are finer settings to configure how um, the artificial intelligence shall behave in order to give you an answer, which is inside the parameters which you provided. Yeah. Um, so that is very well explained here um, in the details about those parameters. I recommend that you read it um, and then you know exactly how it works. But for trying it out, yeah, you can use simple values as shown here. So I did more or less the same. I used the completion request, which is just a record class in Java. It has four parameters, model, prompt, te temperature and max tokens. Um, since I'm using checksum, 
to translate my class into a JSON string, I have to take care that the attributes have exactly the same names as the names which are expected inside here, this JSON request post body, which is defined by open API as, uh, open AI as, as input. Yeah. So I use exactly model max tokens with an underscore and temperature and prompt. Yeah. So that's what you can see here. And I provided a default with, yeah. So a, a simple static default method to generate a completion request. And there I have hard coded, um, the model, the temperature and the maximum tokens and the maximum tokens defines how long um, the response can be which you um, get back from chat gbt okay yeah so that is how i built my request with the help of this class you could just also just use a, a, stri a string which directly contains json but i decided to create here a completion request with this and then I'm using a JSON mapper to write my to write an object of this class as a JSON string. So the JSON mapper is something which what, what comes really with a spring framework. So object mapper is a class inside the spring framework. It's mostly directly provided to you if you have a web application and you can use it to translate any Java class, any object of the Java class into a JSON representation. And that's what I'm doing here. I write um, an object of the class uh, completion request into a um, string, which is then a JSON string. And this is then put into a body publisher, which uh, contains a string that is again um, based on the HTTP client, which I'm using here. Yeah, as you can see, then I have built my request and then I'm using an HTTP client. It's the HTTP client, which comes with a um, Java JDK. So this time I don't use the spring web client. I use the HTTP client just for me to play around. In general, I would recommend the spring web client if you have a spring application. Nevertheless, yeah, this client exists also, and you can use its send method to send the request, which we built before, um, to the given URI. And you have also to, to define what shall happen with the response. So here I define an HTTP response body handlers, and it is of string. So the um, response body is handled as a string. And then after I have the result of the send method, I just take care of the body. So I take the body and then I have a um, response body here. And the response body is then a JSON string, which I pass again with this JSON mapper, which is object mapper. This time I pass it into an instance of the class completion response. That is again pretty similar to the completion request. Yeah, here I have again a record. The record has two attributes, usage and choices. Choices is a list of choice and usage and choice is again another child record. Choice has just one attribute text and usage has details about the token which have been consumed to produce an answer um, to this chat gpt api request yeah so i was also interested in the in, in the usage of tokens but the most interesting thing is here the text so let's check um, again in the api reference um, how the response looks in json yeah you can see it here it has several more attributes but i don't care about the id i didn't care about object created and, and model yeah um, but what i cared about is about choices and choices is, as you can see here, it is a list. And inside the list, we have again several objects. And the most interesting thing is here the attribute text. That's why I have also here choices text. And the text is really the answer which we get from the chat GBT over its API. Um, I was not interested in the other values and attributes which we have here, uh, but I was then additionally interested in the usage. Um, yeah, so that's why I passed the usage also into uh, instances of my record class. 
I added one more method here since uh, we have a list of choices which are probably that you can have more than one answer and that you can probably select the best answer you like most here yeah? I just interested in the first answer so I added a method called first answer which um, takes uh, from the choices just the first element and there the text uh, value in it and then I give it back as a string or as an optional in the case that I didn't get an answer I will give back an uh, empty optional. So let's check again um, my main method. So after I pass the JSON response string into a completion response, I give back the answer, the first answer, um, and then I store this answer in my model. Yeah, that is again some time leaf um, and spring web stuff yeah so we have a model which um, is used for the exchange between um, your backend application in java and uh, html presented in the browser um, so we have a model the model contains a field response and there i write the message the text which i get back from the chat gbt api so let's see this one more time in action Tell the watchers of this video to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Clicking again the send button which does now exactly the same as before. Um, I'm handling the request in my Spring application. I create an HTTP request with the HTTP client and send it to the ChatGBT API. And the answer of the ChatGBT API, and that are my final words. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Your support would be greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.